My name is Edward Zhang. In this video, I am going to explain what constraint satisfaction is. Let me start with an example. British Telecom has many jobs to do every day. A job may involve the installation of a new telephone or the upgrade of an exchange. The jobs are geographically distributed, as shown in green boxes in the figure. Every day, British Telecom has to decide which technician, as shown in yellow circles in the figure, to do which job, in what order, and at what time. Each job requires certain skills, so not every technician can do every job. Customers may request the jobs to be done at certain times. Traveling requirements limit the choice of jobs that a technician can do after finishing a job. This is a big operation. With thousands of technicians involved, a saving of 0.5% could mean millions of pounds of saving every year. What exactly is a constraint satisfaction problem? It is a decision problem. You have a number of decisions to make. In the above example, you have to decide which technician should do which job at what time. For each decision, there are limited choices. The exact way to define the decisions and choices for the above example is non-trivial. It is a task that requires training. Decisions constrain each other. Constraints can take any form. In the example, if you send a technician to job A, he can't be sent to job B at the same time. You have to allow travelling time from one job to another. This limits the schedule further. Your task is to decide who to do what and when without violating the constraints. Sometimes, some solutions are preferred to others, in which case, your task will be to find the best solution. British Airway is another company that employs constraint technology. In the 90s, they developed constraint satisfaction techniques to allocate aircraft to their flights. There are many constraints involved. Obviously, an aircraft can only serve one flight at a time. Maintenance and cleaning restrict the availability of aircraft. Capacity limits the choice of aircraft too. Microsoft also uses constraint technology. For example, their product Auto Collage has to select a subset of photos supplied by the user to form a collage. It has to decide which photographs to select, where to place them, and how to blend them together. Decisions go all the way down to pixel level, which pixel should be on and off. To create a beautiful collage, many constraints must be observed. The popular game Sudoku is also a constraint satisfaction problem. Here you have to decide which number to put into which box, satisfying all the constraints in the puzzle. People recognize products and brand names. When looking at the car, few would ask who built the engine, who made the nuts and bolts, who supplied the steel. Similarly, constraint satisfaction is behind many applications, but few people recognize it. It is really the unsung hero in many products and services. Why do people study constraint satisfaction? First, it is seen everywhere. Therefore, general methods developed for solving constraint satisfaction problems can be reused again and again. Secondly, specialized methods can be developed to exploit the features of such problems. Special methods in constraint satisfaction help to solve larger problems quicker. There are many examples of special tools doing special jobs in daily life. For example, one would not use general tools such as pliers, 
and screwdrivers to open a can. A can opener will do the job better. Constraint satisfaction is a hard problem. The first challenge is in modeling. You have to decide what the decisions and constraints should be. This is an engineering problem. After the problem is formulated, finding the solutions is hard. Take the British Telecom problem as example. There are thousands of decisions to be made every day, with many times more constraints. The sheer number of combinations means that exhaustive search is out of the question. The problem is called combinatorial explosion. It is the very problem that makes chess challenging and passwords hard to crack. It is a fundamental problem in computer science. Some algorithms can find solutions quicker than others. Some would have a better chance of finding solutions within limited time. To summarize, constraint satisfaction is a decision problem. You have limited choices, but the choices often conflict with each other. Constraint satisfaction is ubiquitous. How clever an algorithm matters. Clever algorithms have been developed. They try to exploit the features of the problems so as to find better solutions in larger problems quicker. Constraint satisfaction is a big business, although people don't necessarily realize it. Just a final remark. If there were no constraints, any decision would be as good as any other, which means solutions are easy to find. So constraints make the problem hard to solve. However, to the trained eyes, constraints also guide us to solutions. Training in constraint satisfaction teaches us how to use the constraints, or use the force.